Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to another video with the electrical guide. Today, I want to show you how to navigate the Canadian Electrical Code 2021. This book can be a little tricky to navigate. I'll give you three examples today. We can practice looking things up. And for this video today, I'm going to pretend like I've got no idea where to look either. So we're going to follow it as if we were new to this book to answer these questions. So first question, what is the maximum space along the walls between receptacles in a living room of a residential dwelling? All right, so the first place I usually recommend going is the index. If you've got no idea where to start, the index is a good place. Now, I usually use a paper book, but for the sake of this video, I will be using a digital copy just to make this easy. So we're here in the index. Obviously, it's organized alphabetically. So our question, what's the maximum space along the wall between receptacles? What's the key word in this question? It's going to be receptacles. So we're going to go to R. Going to look up receptacles in the book here. All right, we've got receptacles here. And let's see, we want to know the spacing of receptacles for dwelling units. So if we're kind of looking down through the various subcategories here, one of them is indeed for dwelling units. So that sounds like somewhere where we should start, potentially residential occupancies as well. But there's a trend here, 26, 722, 26, 720 to 724. These are all in the exact same place. So we'll start at the first one the lowest number, 26, 720, and we'll just scroll through looking for anything we can find about the spacing of receptacles on the wall. So we hit general underneath receptacles for residential occupancies. It's a good place to start. And if I had no idea where to find this, I would probably just start looking through, scrolling, you know, page by page. So Receptacles for dwelling units, that's us, shall meet the following requirements. Um, receptacles shall be installed in the finished walls of every room. So we're asking about the living room that works for us, other than bathrooms, hallways, laundry rooms, water closets, utility rooms, or closets. So that no point along the floor line of any usable wall space is more than 1.8 meters horizontally from the receptacle. What does that mean? Here's a visual. So you can't have more than 1.8 meters from anywhere along the wall to the closest receptacle. So from the edge, you can measure 1.8, put an outlet, but between each outlet, you can actually have up to 3.6 meters because even if you were to drop a pin right between them, you would still have 1.8 meters to the closest receptacle. So it's worded in a tricky way but what this means is 3.6 meters between them and no farther than 1.8 meters from any point on the wall to a receptacle. So that's how we found that one. We started in the index. It took us to section 26, 722. We started at the lowest number, actually at 720. And then we came to the next page, 722. We found it right away. And I would always recommend you highlight things you find like this because you'll probably be back here. Okay, so let's try another one. All right, let's try one more question here. What conductor size do I need for a hot tub rated at 40 amps? Now again, if I don't know where to start, I'm going to start in the index. What word might I look up? I could try conductor size. I could try hot tub maybe. Let's try hot tub first. That's easy to look up. And we'll see if we can find anything on hot tubs here. All right, now I'm in the place where hot tubs would be, and I'm not seeing it. I get close with hydro massage bathtub. That's pretty close. 68, 68, 68, 68. Huh, I wonder what 68 is talking about. Something to do with bathtubs or hydro massage bathtubs. We want to know hot tubs. There's a pretty good chance that section 68 is going to be where we want to go. But if we don't find the word maybe here, we can also go into the table of contents. Now my table of contents is on the side of my screen here. Yours will be on a page in the beginning of your paper book and we'll read through the section titles. Specifically we're looking for 68 to see what they're talking about there because we found something similar here in the index. 
So 68 is pools, tubs, and spas. Okay, this looks like maybe we're on the right trail. I see right away here the word hot tub. So they're calling a pool. The word pool includes all these things, including hot tubs. So okay, we're in the right place. Now we want to know conductor size. So we can start looking through. We can see if we can find anything on hot tubs here regarding conductor sizing. Scrolling quickly, junction boxes, transformer, receptacles, ground fault, uh, permanently installed swimming pools, that's not really us, storable swimming pools, not really us, hydro massage, bathtubs are close, oh, hot tubs right here. Anything about conductor sizing so far? No, let's check the next page. Conductor sizing, nothing here about conductor sizing. And then we're on to the next section. Okay, so what do we do? We hit a dead end. Well, we can try another keyword in our question. We'll try conductor this time. We'll go back to the index. We'll look up C for conductor. Okay, we got conductor has a lot. There's a lot going on here for conductor. Everything here is conductors. We want to know the size, though the size so what do we see regarding size condition of use nothing about size yet but we're not at s this is in alphabetical order as well okay i see size here under conductors i uh, don't really see anything about hot tubs here the very first rule it lists is 4-002 what is section four section four is conductors okay let's start there Whoa, size of conductors, close. I don't see anything about hot tubs here. Impacity of wires and cables. When we talk about the size, the size is essentially referring to the impacity value because our size is based on how many amps that conductor size can carry on it. So impacity of wires and cables is somewhere that we'll probably be interested in looking for this question. The maximum current that a copper conductor, of course we assume copper if it doesn't tell us, of a given size and insulation is permitted to carry shall be as follows. Okay, so we got free air, that's not us. So I'm seeing here that table two is going to tell us a given size based on opacity. So we'll go to table two here. We've got allowable opacities for not more than three insulated copper conductors, that's going to be us not more than 5,000 volts. That's also us because we're talking about a residential hot tub. Even if it was a commercial hot tub, 5,000 volts is really high. So we're good in this table. And we are in a cable for this, and we're basing this on 30 degree ambient temperature. In a residential setting, we have to use the 75 degree column. Mostly that's because standard residential breakers are stamped with a termination temperature of 75 degrees. Here's an example. You should always check the side of your breaker and double check. Most of the time you're gonna see that 75 in a residential application. So we wanna know 40 amps. So here's our opacity here, right? On a 75 degrees, we don't have a 40 but we do have a 50. So 35, number 10 is not gonna be enough. We need more than 40, at least 40. So a number eight, good for 50 amps, is gonna be the size of conductor that we need for a hot tub rated at 40 amps. All right, last question. How close can I put a receptacle to a sink in my bathroom? All right, again, if we don't know any better, we're gonna start in the index. Now we can try and look up sink, but I don't think that's gonna be in here. We can try and look up bathroom, just to save some time, probably not gonna find that either. But what we can look up is receptacle. After all, we are wondering details around the location of a receptacle. This just happens to be near the sink in a washroom. So here we are under receptacles. We've only got about this much. All right, and this is in a residential setting and in a bathroom. Does anything here talk about bathrooms or residential settings? Again, we've got those same 26700 series rules here for dwelling units and residential occupancies. Let's start there. We'll do the 720 again. And right away, I can see it. I've highlighted this previously. But if I didn't have this highlighted, I would see 
receptacles for residential occupancies, I would start reading again, looking for a measurement because really the question is asking for a measurement, right? So I'm just going to be looking down the page for a number with an associated measurement beside it. Eventually I get to this one meter here and I see that at least one receptacle shall be located in each bathroom and washroom with a wash basin, wash basin equals sink, and shall be located within one meter of any wash basin. So this is telling me I need a receptacle within one meter. It doesn't have a minimum distance here. Now I happen to know that receptacles near sinks usually have to be GFCI protected. I'm just gonna check this rule too, since we're talking about a receptacle near a sink, it's not in the question. We wanted specifically to know how close. It says no more than one meter. So that kind of answers our question there. There's no minimum, but there is another criteria when it comes to putting a receptacle near a sink or a wash basin, receptacles having CSA configuration 5-15R or 5-20R, these are the two common types, installed within 1.5 meters of sinks, that includes of course one meter, wash basins complete with a drain pipe, that's what they're defining as a sink, bathtubs or shower stalls shall be protected by a ground fault circuit interrupter of the class A type. So little bonus info, it has to be less than one meter away, but it also has to be a class A type if it's within 1.5 meters of your sink, which it will be if you're adhering to the less than one meter rule previously found. All right, couple common questions that you might be looking for in the code book. We covered them today. I hope that using the index, defaulting on the table of contents if you can't find it in the index, and trying to navigate with keywords in your question, we're able to give you a little insight into how to better navigate the Canadian Electrical Codebook 2021 edition. Thanks for watching another video with the Electrical Guide. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you appreciate this content.